Today, we will talk about how to add potassium to soil. Let's have a look at the details. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium are the key nutrients that plants need to grow. Whether it's been washed away by water or used up for flowering and fruiting. Low potassium requires a soil adjustment. Fortunately, lots of organic solutions are available for both quick fixes and long-term soil maintenance. To keep your garden green and maximize your yield, add potassium when your plants start to flower or if you spot yellowing. In addition, testing your soil every one to two years will let you know exactly what amendments to make. The first method is adding fast-acting amendments. Mix in muriate of potash or sulfate of potash. Muriate of potash, or potassium chloride, and sulfate of potash, or potassium sulfate, are natural minerals. Muriate of potash tends to be cheaper, but the chlorine it contains can hurt the helpful microbes living in your garden soil. Sulfate of potash is safer, but it's a bit more expensive. Try kelp meal or seaweed. Kelp and other types of seaweed are rich in potassium and quickly release it into soil. Try sulpo mag, also called lingbanite or sulfate of potash magnesia. Sulpo mag is your most affordable option. It's best to use it if a soil test reveals your soil is low in both potassium and magnesium. Check your product's label to ensure it's OMRI certified and for recommended amounts per square foot or meter. Add hardwood ash only if you need to increase the soil's pH. Sprinkle 1 to 2 pounds of ash per 100 square feet. Wood ash raises soil pH or decreases the acidity. If you use wood ash to supply the garden with potassium, it's best to regularly test the pH to make sure that the soil is balanced. The second method is using compost and slow-release amendments. Add green sand to your soil. Use about 5 pounds per 100 square feet of soil. Green sand releases potassium at a slow rate, so it's better for long-term soil maintenance than quick adjustments. It also works as a conditioner and helps soil retain water. Add granite dust. Granite dust is mined from natural granite quarries and is fairly inexpensive. Like green sand, it releases potassium slowly, so it won't work well if you need to make a quick fix. Bury banana peels in your soil. Cut up peels into small pieces and bury them an inch or two in your soil. The peels will take time to rot, so they'll release potassium more slowly than other amendments. Beef up your compost with banana peels. To increase your compost's potassium content, add fruit and vegetable waste to the pile. Banana peels are your best bet, but orange rinds, lemon rinds, beets, spinach, and tomatoes will make excellent additions, too. Keep your compost covered to prevent potassium leaching. Use a lidded container or cover your compost heap with a tarp when you're not using it. Potassium compounds are water-soluble, so rainfall can easily wash them out of your compost. And, the third method is knowing when to add potassium. Have your soil tested every one to two years. The results will let you know if your soil contains low, medium, optimum, or high levels of potassium nitrogen, phosphorus, and other nutrients. Add potassium when your crop starts to flower and fruit. When they flower and fruit, plants can deplete their potassium supply in a matter of days. Add potassium if you spot signs of deficiency. Signs of deficiency include yellow leaves and brown leaf edges. Monitor your plants more closely if you have sandy soil. Because of its high solubility, potassium can easily leach out of soil especially in coarse, sandy soils. Check for signs of magnesium deficiency. Adding more potassium can lower the amount of other nutrients that the plant absorbs. Potassium competes with magnesium most directly, so look for yellowing between leaves veins. The veins themselves stay green, but the spaces between them turn yellow. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you like our videos.